All right, guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how to uh, bring a data set that can be found on the internet into Excel and then dropping that into the R program to where you can then look at things such as the measure of center, whether that be the mean, the median, the mode, or the uh, measure of spread, whether that be the standard deviation or the IQR. I'm going to walk you through how to do all of those with the R program. So the first thing we need to do is, is define a data set on the internet and so to do that I'm going to go to this website uh, and if you're following along it should be the, the website's going to be lib.stat.cmu.edu backslash and then dazzle all in capital letters backslash d-a-s-l with a backslash and then my computer says there's no internet, so just bear with me for a second. All right, let's try that again. All right, so that brings us to the data and story library website. And I'm going to already have a data set made up, so I want to, or that I found. So I'm going to uh, go to Power Search, and then type in the word "healthy," and we're going to bring up this healthy breakfast story. And so it's just going to do an explanation. The story name is Healthy Breakfast. Topics are nutrition and health. Data name is cereals, and this data file contains the nutritional information and grocery shelf location for 77 cereals. Current research states that adults should consume no more than 30% of their calories in the form of fat. They need about 50 grams for women and 63 grams for men of protein daily and should provide a remainder of the calorie intake with complex carbs. That include the serial name, manufacturer type, types of calories, grams of protein, grams of fat, milligrams of sodium, grams of fiber, grams of carbs, grams of sugars, milligrams of potassium, and the typical percentage of the FDA RDA's vitamins, the weight of one serving, and the number of cups in a serving, as well as the location. Now, the location on the shelf seems uh, maybe not important, but they companies strategically put cereal on different shelves to appeal to different audiences. So, shelf being the uh, lowest, number one, shelf one being the lowest shelf, that would be cereal that typically oppose, appeals to smaller kids. Shelf, shelf two, someone who is a little bit taller, the typical, and then shelf three, the upper shelf material usually is uh, the healthier cereals, those that appeal to an adult. So this kind of explains just how to read the data set, and then it gives an image down here of stuff that can be pulled from the data set. So here's a box plot of the sugars across um, the shelf that they were found on. And you can see that the uh, there's many different interpretations that will be read into this, but we're not going to worry about that just now. But what we're going to do is we're going to go to the data file, serials, we're going to open it up. And that brings us to this data. Now this data is not necessarily that easy to get into R. So um, it's very disorganized. So the easiest way to do this is to highlight the entire data set. And we're going to copy. Then we're going to open up an Excel sheet. Obviously, how you guys get into an Excel is going to be slightly different. Now, if I hit paste, it's going to look like this. It's a mess. So rather than doing that, I'm going to undo that. We're going to go to paste special, directly below paste, paste special. And then it's going to say HTML, which is what it's currently trying to do. But we want to paste it as a text. So it's going to do a text to column format. So it's going to read the text and then put it in columns based on how the text is spaced out in the document. And when we do that, we see that, that it's much more organized. The data set is in individual rows along with individual columns. So we've got the name of the serial. So for here, this is all brand, all brand with extra fiber, almond delight, Cheerios, clusters, corn checks, corn flakes. Who manufactures them? Uh, so in what does in mean so let's go back to the website 
and it says MFR manufacturer where A is home American home food products, G is General Mills, K is Kellogg's, N is Nabisco, P is Post, Q is Quaker Oats, and R is Rostam Purina. Okay, so A or N is Nabisco. So th this would be interpreted as Nabisco, Q is Quaker, K is Kellogg's, so on and so forth. Type, what's C mean? So we go back here, type cold or hot. So C means that this cereal, this 100% bran is a cold cereal, whereas right here, cream of wheat is a hot cereal. Then we have the calories, the number of calories, the grams of protein, the, uh, let me make sure it's grams of fat, grams of fat, milligrams of sodium, and so on and so forth. All the way across here, uh, the weight, I believe that's in ounces. Yep, the weight's in ounces of one serving. The cups, how much of a cup is considered one serving. And then the rating, a rating of the cereal. So I'm guessing that the uh, there was some third party that rated the cereals on a scale of, it looks like zero to 100. So like this scored a 36% in terms of overall rating. I don't know how they came up with that, but the rating is on there as well. So we're gonna save this as, so save as, now guys remember I have my working directory set to desktop. You set yours to documents. So you're going to save your data to documents. I'm saving mine to desktop. And I'm going to name this the serial data. So I'm going to name this serial. And I'm going to remember you have to save it as a CSV comma delimited file. And when you hit save it's going to say are you sure? You hit OK. It's going to say there might be issues. That's no big deal. Just hit yes. We're going to minimize that, and now our data is ready to get into R. So I'm going to create a new script. Guys, you should already have this on your other script, but I'm going to get working directory. I'm going to run this. Uh, you can see here, this has it as documents. I am doing mine using a desktop. So I'm going to set mine, users. Fred, I don't know why Fred is there instead of Aaron, but it is. Desktop. And then that sets my working directory. Now I want to bring my data into here. So I'm going to, uh, this is the serial data, so I'll just name it serial. I'm going to read a CSV file where the file's name was serial. And then I'm going to, um, let me go up here. Set my working directory, run, bring the serial data in. Now if I type in serial and run that, it should show up inside of R. Now remember guys, we can go in here and type in names of serial and we can run that and it tells us the title of all of our, it tells us the titles of all of our columns. But remember, if I go to type in mean of carbo, for mean of carbohydrates, says carbo is not found. That's because although I've typed in cereal, I've not attached it. So I need to attach cereal. That way R can now read it, so run. And then now if I type in mean of carbo, it can now calculate the average of carbohydrates. So that's going to, once again, carbohydrates was measured in grams of complex carbs. So 14.5974 means that the average number of complex carbohydrates was 14.5974 grams for all of these types of cereals. Okay, so now we've got this into uh, R. Now let's run through all the things that we can do with that. So the first thing is uh, the mean function. And guys, we've already went over this. We've used mean a good bit, but you just type in mean of whatever you want to do. Uh, so mean of calories, or let's do a mean of fat, and then run, and that's going to tell us the average grams of fat, um, and so on and so forth. So that's a pretty easy function we've already been doing. Now remember, if we do mean of MFR, mean of manufacturers, and we hit run, it's going to say this argument is not numeric or logical. Well, the reason being is is my manufacturer column which is way up here, is measured in N, Q's, K's, R's, G's, 
they're categorical data. So we can't calculate the average of categorical data. So finding the mean for, of the manufacturers would not make much sense. So that's the median of the mean function. Um, now we also have the median function, which would just be median of fat. And then we hit run. And it tells us what is directly in the middle. Uh, another way of doing this is, is if we type in summary of fat and then we run that, it's going to give us uh, that the lowest number of fat or grams of fat was zero. The first quartile, so the bottom 25% was zero. The median, the one in the middle was one. The uh, third quartile was two. The maximum was five with an average of 1.013. So if we use this summary command, it gives us what's called a five number summary, which is min, first quartile, median, third quartile, max. It gives us those five numbers plus the mean. So this one command will actually calculate the median of a function and the mean of a function simultaneously. So that's a convenient command. Okay, so uh, this is the five number summary plus the mean. That's our command to do that. All right. Now, if we want to look at distribution shape, then we need to use a histogram. Histograms is used for distribution shape. And I haven't done this yet, so let's just run through a few of them. Let's do histogram of carbohydrates. And then uh, let's run that. Okay, so we see that we get that the histogram of carbohydrates is uh, unimodal, so there's one single mode uh, or, or mode in the histogram. And we will also see that the graph looks maybe slightly skewed over here to the left, is uh, slightly or significantly less data than over here to the right. So it looks slightly skewed. Um, so we can use then that histogram to talk about the shape of the data. Now if we wanted to do something else like a histogram of sugars, we can run that one as well. And we can see that we get something that, I don't know if it's any more symmetrical, it's just different. Uh, let's try doing histogram of potassium. And there's an example of one that maybe is uh, slightly positively skewed in the opposite direction. Okay, so uh, something to recall, if a histogram looks symmetrical, the appropriate measure of center is the mean and the appropriate measure of spread is the standard deviation. Excuse me. If a histogram is skewed, the appropriate measure of center is the median because it is resistant to the presence of outliers and the and the appropriate measure of spread is the inner quartile range. Okay, so we'll also go over how to do all that in the video as well. We've already covered how to do mean, but we're also gonna cover standard deviation. So just going over through here, if we uh, run the histogram for sugars again, that looks more symmetrical than say the histogram of potassium, okay? or the histogram of carbs. So let's do uh, carbs appear to be skewed. Sugars, although not ideal, appear to be mostly symmetrical 
and potassium appears to be positively skewed. And then up here, guys, carbs appear to be negatively skewed. So there's some examples of different types of histograms we can get. All right, now, um, so with that said, let's go ahead and go, we went over how to find the mean. So since the histogram of sugars gave us something that appeared to be symmetrical, so sugars were symmetrical. So uh, with that said, our measure of center will be the mean of sugars. So with that said, we're gonna go ahead and run the mean of sugars. We're gonna run that in R, and we're gonna see that the mean is 6.922078, and the measure of spread will be the standard deviation. And the code for that is SD parentheses, whatever you're interested in finding the standard deviation of. So standard deviation of sugars would be SD of sugars. And we're going to run that. So then we could say, um, let's say uh, sugars appear to be symmetrical with a mean of 6.922078 and a standard deviation of 4.444885. All right, so that's how we would identify the measure of center and spread for sugars since the sugars is a symmetrical histogram. Now, Let's look at the histogram of potassium. So we're going to run this, and we can see that we get skewed data. Appears to be skewed. So, with that said, our uh, measure of center is our median. So, potassium was skewed. So, our measure of center will be the median of potassium. And then to run that, we just type in median of potassium. And we run that, and we see that we get a median of 90. And then the measure of spread is the inner quartile range. And if you remember in our notes, the inner quartile range is 1.5 times Q3 minus Q1, where Q3 and Q1 represent our... Um, Oh, third quartile and first quartile. So to, to run this, we're going to run the code summary of potassium, run, and that's going to give us our third quartile and our first quartile. So we're going to do uh, over here, we can do 120 minus 40. And actually, let's go ahead and just tie it. Let's just do this. Let's do Q3, we're going to name Q3 the number 120, we're going to name Q1 the number 40, that's our first quartile over here, and then we're going to do IQR is equal to 1.5 Q3 minus Q1. And I think we don't, we don't need this less than dash, we can actually put equals here. Control R, let's see. Okay, so we do have to have a less than dash. Control R. Oh, maybe not. 1.5 times Q3 minus Q1. I have to have my time symbol here. The time symbol is the asterisk, which is directly above the 8. Now, if we run that, it says Q3 was not found. That's because I have not ran this previous code. So I'm going to run Q3, run Q1, now run the IQR, and then type in RQR, run that, and it's going to tell me that my IQR is 120. Now, guys, that's just a coincidence that the IQR happened to also equal 120. It is not something that typically occurs. So 
the measure of spread is an inner quartile range of 120. So we would say, we would finish this up with saying potassium appears to be skewed with a median of, and we found the median of potassium to be 90, and an inner quartile range of 120. And that's how we'd report the data on that. All right, so that's our measures of spread and center. So, um, let's see here. Let's go ahead and go over range. If we want to find range, we just type in range of sugars. And then we run that code. And it's going to not tell us the range, but it's going to tell us the lowest and the highest value. Okay, so the range doesn't actually tell us the range, it just gives us the max and min. So then if we do range equals 15 minus negative 1, which we know to be 15 plus 1, let's do 15 minus parentheses negative 1. And then we run that, and we type in range, we get that the range of sugars is 16. If we want to do the range of potassium, we get from negative 1 to 330. So then the question might be, well, what's this negative 1 mean? How can I have negative 1 potassium? Well, it explains it in the uh, data. Uh, if we go back to the website, it says right here, a value of negative 1 indicates that there's a missing observation. Okay, so reading that tells us that when there's a negative 1 showing up, that means that there was a cereal out there such that the uh, potassium was not in the data set. So to accommodate that kind of an issue, we can type in potassium, and we can look through here, and we see negative 1 shows up a couple times in all of our potassium. So that means there's a couple cereals where they didn't record the potassium. So if we say that the range is 331, we're actually saying something that's false because this negative 1 just represents uh, something that there was not data for. So if we uh, go in here, and we could, let's see here, minimum of potassium, it's going to tell us it's negative 1. All right, so when that happens, how do we find uh, the range when this occurs, something like this? So we'd go to Excel, and what we would do is, is we need to find the smallest potassium that's not negative 1. So what we do is, is we highlight the potassium column, and then over here is going to say sort and filter. We're going to sort and filter from smallest to largest, and it's going to ask us to expand the selection. So that's going to expand this to this entire data set. And we want to hit yes, that way everything follows. And when we do that, that's going to put this now in order. So now we know that the two things, Almond Delight and Cream of Wheat, did not have a potassium showing up on their label. The smallest potassium level that showed up was 330. And then if we scroll to the bottom of the data set, we see that the largest potassium was 330. And then once again, potassium was measured in uh, milligrams of potassium. So now that we've done that, we can then do uh, range of potassium equals 330 minus 15, which we know to be 315. So we can finish up by saying the range of potassium is 315 milligrams. All right, so that's the range. That's how we would find the range. Um, now, the uh, mode, another common value that we calculate. Give me just a second. All right, so if we want to get the mode of a data set, there's no command for mode. So if I type in mode of potassium and then hit run, it's going to say that numeric. It's causing some something's not reading. So there's really no commode, there's really no command to get the mode in R um, that's not quite extensive. So to make it as simple as possible, what we can do is we can do table of potassium and then hit control R. And what that's going to do is, is it's going to do a count. So it's going to count up how often something occurs. So in our data set, negative one occurred twice.
So we get our data set. Negative 1 occurs twice. 15 is once. 20 is once. 25 is three times. 15 is once. 20 is once. 25 is four times. That says, let's take a look. Oh, yes. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. So 25 appears four times. So what this is doing is, is it's just going through and counting up how much something occurs. And if we look through here, we see 35 occurs 5, 90 is 5, 110 is 5. So then what we can say is, is potassium is multimodal, meaning it has multiple modes, with the most frequent potassium levels being 35, 90, and 110 milligrams, with each having five counts. So that's just saying these occurred the most, they, both, they all occurred five times, and since there was a multiple of them that occurred the same number, we just write them all down. Now if we were to go through and do a same uh, table of sugars, we'd see that uh, let's see if sugars is red using grams of sugars. So we would see that sugars has a mode of three grams with a count of 13. Meaning that three grams appeared the most in the number of sugars and it occurred a total of 13 times. All right, so that's how we calculate the mode on R. Now let's go over the last thing in this chapter, which is box, box and whiskers plots. Box and whisker plots. So the command for that is pretty easy. We just do box plot of potass or potassium, and then we run that, and that's going to create a box plot. It's going to go ahead and calculate the uh, extreme level of outliers and it's also going to plot the outlier. Now the presence of outliers typically means that our data is skewed. So this box plot corresponds to the fact that we had a histogram of potassium that we uh, thought appeared to be skewed to the right uh, or positively skewed. If we run the box plot we see that it's skewed on the upper end as well. So we get supporting information. Now our other one that we thought was skewed was, um, let's see here, carbohydrates. So if we do box plot of carbo, we see that we get data that has got one outlier on the bottom side, which would imply that there is evidence of it being skewed to the left. And then that would also match our histogram of carbo, which uh, we said appeared to be skewed on the left. Okay, so that's how we run box and whisker plots. Now, if we want to do a comparative study where we look at box of plots, so for example, uh, if we look at manufacturers, we see that we've got several manufacturers. So if we uh, create a table of manufacturers, we're going to see that there was uh, A. A was for American food products. So A happened once. G, which was for, I think, General Mills, yes, had 22 cereals. Kellogg's had 23. Um, N, which is Nabisco, had 6. P, which is Post, had 9. Q, which is Quaker Oats, had 8. And R, which is Ralston Purina, had 8. So once again, guys, we could do a pie chart of our table of our manufacturers. And we can see how the... Uh, different brands of different manufacturers of cereal is distributed on the shelf of 77 items. But what I'm getting at is, is what if we want to look at how does the sugar levels look across all the different types of manufacturers? So we can do box plot of sugars across manufacturers. And when we hit run, And that is not doing what I needed to. So let me try to run this. So we're going to add a tilde. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> so let's add this box plots 
across types of manufacturers. Anytime we do an analysis across groups, we use a tilde, which is uh, in the top left hand corner of your keyboard. It's right next to the one. It's um, you'll see it. Use shift and then whatever button that is gives you the tilde sign. So we're going to do the box plot of sugars across manufacturer and we'll see that okay when we do that A doesn't have a box plot it's just got a single line. Well that's because if we look over here A only had one element in the data set and then G had 22 so then G is next and so on and so forth. Kellogg's box and whisper plots so we can look at it and say okay sugar content Kellogg's had the widest range, if you will, whereas Nabisco had um, a low range, and then you can do some comparatives. So, like if we look at Kellogg's here, the top 50% of sugar content of Kellogg's cereals was more had more sugar than even the highest Nabisco cereal. So, the Nabisco cereal with the most um, sugar in it still had less sugar than 50% of the sugar 50% of the cereals that Kellogg's even makes and so on and so forth we can see that the uh, top 25% of cereals that Nabisco makes had um, less sugar than the top 50% of Quaker and so on and so forth. So there's many other ways that we can interpret this, but now we can do a comparative study on the box and whisker plots to see how all of these different companies compare in terms of their product. All right, and then the last thing I want to show you in this video is, is how do we go about making a um, analysis over just one brand? So if we type in MFR, we see that we have multiple manufacturers, but let's say we want to look at just, um, I don't know, let's say we want to look at just Nabisco. So how do we get the mean of the sugars for Nabisco? If we try to type this in, we get that Nabisco was not found. If we uh, try to do the mean of sugars across N, we can do the mean of sugars across manufacturer, let's see here, MFR, and it's going to say argument is not logical. If we try to do comma, we get that the numerical length is not one. So how do we run the uh, mean of an individual? So um, individual manufacturer, I should say. So to complete an analysis over just one category what we would have to do is, is we would go to Excel we would then so since we're trying to do an analysis of just one category we're gonna go over here one manufacturer we're gonna go over here and we're going to sort our data and we're going to sort it for alphabetical order using manufacturer and we're going to expand the selection to contain the entire data set now once we've done that that's going to put the American first uh, the G which stood for General Mills and so on and so forth and then we've got Nabisco and guys tell you what here's what we're going to do we're going to do uh, an analysis of General Mills so what we're going to do is we're going to go to Excel and we have all of this extra data that's not needed we're just really interested in these General Mills cereals so what we're going to do is, is we're going to click on column 2, which is our manufacturer A, and we're going to delete this. Then we're going to go down here to everything that's below G, and we're going to click on that columns, or the rows to the left, and we're going to hide all of them, and we're going to delete all of those. And so now we've just created a data set that has just our General Mills manufacturer in it. So then we'll go to File. Now we're not going to save because that will replace our data set. We're going to save as. And then this is a 
cereal, and then I'm going to title it G, cereal G, for cereal for general meals. And we're going to save that just like we would any other. It's going to get through the whole spill. And then now when we go back into R, we're going to tell R to re, uh, we're going to do serial G. We're going to tell R to read the CSV file, serial G dot CSV. We're going to run that command. And then now if I type in serial G and run, I have just, not the entire data set, but just the data set that goes along with General Mills. So then now I can get the names of serial G. Excuse me. Run that command. And we get that we have all of our uh, same names. And now I can come in here and do mean of manufacturer. Sorry, not mean of manufacturer. Mean of uh, sugars. And now it'll calculate the average sugar content of just the general mill cereals. And I can go in here and type in histogram of sugars. And now it's giving me the histogram of sugars of just the general mill cereals. So then we want to do maybe a histogram sugars comma main equals um, general mills sugar content. And then that way, if we were to copy and paste this to a Word document, you're definitely telling the reader what this graph represents. It's not just a graph of histogram of all the cereals, it's just a histogram of the sugar content of just the General Mills cereals in this data set. And so that's different things we can do with that. And you can do that with the uh, box plot. You can do box plot of potassium. And then you can go in here and let me just add it over here on my R editor. Box plot of potassium. Run. That's going to give it to us. And then I think we have to type in. So main, I think we can do main label on box plots. I've not tried it before. Uh, General Mills potassium content. And we try to run it. Yeah, and it does. All right. So we can also do that same thing, but now instead of looking at the entire data set, we're looking at just General Mills. There's ways to do this with R, but it's much more complicated. So the easiest way to do it is to just go to Excel and then modify your data set in Excel. And then once you drop it into R, you can then do all your calculations. So then if you want to do another manufacturer, you would just go back to your original spreadsheet. You would just go back to your original spreadsheet. Uh, let's say, the serial spreadsheet and let's say you wanted to do a study on or a look at just Kellogg's so then we would go through here and we'd find where the Kellogg's start and we'd get rid of everything above besides our title and then we go to the bottom of the Kellogg's and get rid of everything below and in doing that, we've just created a data set of just the Kellogg data, and then that we can use that to uh, answer any questions about Kellogg cereals. So that finishes up that video. I know it was a long one. Uh, hopefully it all made sense. If you have any questions, let me know.